Jewel Strawberry coming to you talking about e-textiles today. Now this hat may have some integrated lights, but it's not really e-textiles. So what is e-textiles? First, you got to understand that normal cables have wires and connectors, right? So this is a cable or a wiring harness that has an extruded metal or solid metal wire or it may be multi-stranded wire for increased flexibility. But let's just, for the sake of argument, say that it's, it's a solid metal, solid piece of metal. If one takes and impregnates or puts some metal in to regular thread, one can make thread into a conductor. And it's much more flexible than traditional wire, right? And then you can do fun things like uh, weave it into fabric and it's much more flexible and lower profile than traditional wires. There's a lot of advantages to that and a lot we can say about what we can do with this. So what are e-textiles? The e is for electronics, of course, and we are used to wires wires and cables we use these for our computers we use them to charge our cell phones and they're all around us they have connectors and the, the wires inside are solid or multi-stranded conductors now you can get a conductor out of thread I have various threads here there's different options and imagine if you take this thread and you sew with it, then you have a cable integrated into fabric. That's e-textiles. Now, why would somebody want to do that? Well, if you have some e-textiles, then you can get a very flexible solution, very low profile solution. That may be your goal. Or, if you integrate them into some flexible fabric, you can actually use them as a health monitor. Now, how is that? Well, when you conduct electricity across a thread, it has a certain resistance. If you stretch the fabric, the resistance changes. Likewise, when a heart beats, the resistance is changing and sensitive software can pick that up and translate that into a heartbeat. The reason that I was introduced to e-textiles is for a project that's, that started out its life called the Land Warrior System. Land Warrior was developed because soldiers have to carry a lot of weight. They have to carry their guns, their ammunition, food, extra clothing, comfort items like magazines, water, etc. And once all that is added up, it can be over 120 pounds on a soldier. Now, if you're small like me, you might only weigh around 120 pounds. So having 120 pounds pack is quite significant. And for larger soldiers, they can carry more, but of course, they're gonna to wanna to carry more food and their clothing is going to be bigger. So, how, do, how can we reduce the amount of equipment that soldiers need to carry? Well, consider they might have 10 different electronic devices. There may be their regular radio, their squad leader radio, a GPS device. They may have laser rangefinders, et cetera, et cetera. So let's, for the sake of argument, say that they have 10 different devices and then they'll want to carry spare batteries. Well, each of these is a different device, so they'll need to carry 10 different spare batteries. That's a lot of weight. Batteries are very dense. So if we can somehow connect the devices to where they have a common power source, then the soldier may only need to carry one extra battery. This is an oversimplification of the Land Warrior system Stay with me here. I'm just talking about how it relates to e-textiles. So consider that we have e-textiles 
And instead of having a bunch of wires around a soldier's body, they can be snagged and, oh, by the way, have low user acceptance because nobody wants a bunch of wires on their body. You have something closer to this that could then go around the body and be and conform more. That has higher user acceptance. Now, this was not used in the final design of, again, the replacement to the land warrior system. It was just a concept, but I'm giving you some ideas about how e-textiles can be used. For a more fun project, this was a project that um, I did with some young ladies, some students, to talk about um, electronics and to get them excited about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And this is a kit from SparkFun. You can also buy kits like this from Adafruit, LilyPad, etc. And this is actually a, a LilyPad system. So there are LEDs that we stitched on the front, and then each of those LEDs goes to the circuit card and the battery source is actually connected to the circuit card as well through that conductive thread. So I sewed each of these traces on there. And that's fun. Katy Perry actually wore a light up dress to the Met Ball one year. What other things that one can do with them, you can't really see it from there, but if you have conductive traces on different layers of the fabric. When you push them together, that completes the circuit and can serve as a button, an on-off switch of sorts. Now that's been actually integrated into a messenger jacket that has LEDs pointing to the left and LEDs pointing to the right. And the messenger, bike messenger, can actually push those, that button on the left and the LEDs light up, sig signaling that they're going to turn left or right, as the case may be. And so that's an actual everyday use. The re uh, once I learned about the e-textiles, there was a Raytheon Innovation Challenge that I answered. And the challenge was, how do you monitor a driver in a vehicle? And at the time, I came up with the idea to make a t-shirt out of e-textiles. Now, how could a t-shirt monitor someone's vitals? Well, if the fabric is stretchy, the resistance of the trace changes with breath and with movement. So what do I mean by that? If one puts a, an electrical signal or just power across this trace or wire or thread, however you want to describe it, if one puts power across, there is a certain power drop due to the resistance and V equals IR, uh, voltage equals current times resistance. So if the resistance of the thread change changes, the amount of power changes, so that one can actually measure the resistance across this. By integrating other sensors in there, one can get blood oxygenation and other vital signs out of just a stretchy t-shirt. Well, my idea to monitor a, a driver was to have that driver wear a t-shirt made of e-textiles called Plain White Tea. Shout out to the band that's saying, hey, hey there, Delilah, love your music. And have a laptop on the passenger seat next to the driver that would record the data that would be sent wirelessly. Well, I assembled a diverse team. As, as I mentioned in my first video, I believe in diversity and the power of teams to make ideas better. And one of my coworkers said, why not use a cell phone? There, we could create an app and then we don't need a laptop to sit next to the driver. The driver may ha already have a cell phone and, it, and it'd be a lot easier. I said, absolutely. 
So we submitted that idea, plain white tee, and then we thought about it some more and said, well, what, what does the driver touch while she's driving? Well, she touches the steering wheel. So why not integrate the e-textiles into a steering wheel cover and then we can monitor her while she's driving. Then she doesn't have to wear a different t-shirt. So we submitted that as the idea hold on and it actually won. Well, subsequently we learned that Toyota is already pursuing that technology, had already been pursuing that for some time. So, hey, kudos to Toyota to having the good, good idea before the team did and for pursuing that. However, while I was at the innovation workshop, I met other inventors and I explained the technology. And one of the other inventors, Carl, said, I see another application for this. Air traffic controllers are falling asleep at their desk. They have late night shifts, they get bored because there aren't many airplanes coming or going, and so they fall asleep. If we could monitor them, then we could send an alarm to wake them up, and that would greatly increase <laughs> their probability of being awake and increase the safety of the airports. All very good stuff. So we thought about that, and they're not driving, so they're not touching steering wheels. We didn't want to make them wear t-shirts, so what are they touching all the time? They actually have headphones on. Well, the headphones have ear cuffs, and the ear cuffs are actually in intimate contact with the skin, so we can put the sensors there. That's actually one of the requirements for this technology to work. If you're going to use e-textiles as biometric sensors, you want it in close contact with the skin. Uh, something loose like my sweater here obviously isn't touching my skin all the time and cannot track my heart rate, right? And you, and you get a lot of false data from the sweater moving around. So you want something that's touching constantly. So we came up with an ear cuff solution. Um, here's one of the prototypes we put together. I just bought some cotton at the craft store. I used some conductive thread that I purchased off of SmartFun and I sewed a wire onto it. And I was showing that we could transmit signals across it and measure the resistance. Now, in later prototypes, there were more sensors integrated into this. We actually had some components on there, including an LED. This is just an early prototype to show you how easy it is to come up with an idea and to just very quickly come up with some a, a mock-up. So that is actually that actually that idea became the first full patent that I was awarded through the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. So I'm very proud of that. And thank you, Carl, and my other co-inventors for working on the idea with me and coming up with the great application. So after that, um, I want to talk to you about different substrates. You can have a, a net, a, a knitted solution, such as the Virginia Tech mock-up here. You can have stretchy, or you can have something more stiff. It all, all depends on what you're trying to do. For power, we tried different weaves. A tighter weave gets a, a different resistance than a looser weave, for example, and you'll want some sort of cover, like this canvas cover here, so that you don't hurt the person, again, because skin is conductive, right? And you could see, just like on my mock-up, this one is terminated to a wire that comes out. You may want to use snap connectors. Now, these connectors are actually have a tighter tolerance than the snaps that you can buy at a traditional craft store because you want as much metal to metal contact as possible to lower the resistance and the power drop in that connection. What else can we say about e-textiles? There are a, a lot of applications and from art to air traffic controllers to soldier worn systems, 
and it can be combined with other technology such as wireless charging because you can imagine if you can just drop your cell phone in a pocket and have it charge with an e-textiles pocket that's very convenient that was a novel technology back when we were working on the alternatives to Land Warrior, but it's much more common now. I have a wireless charging toothbrush, and you may have a wireless system to charge your cell phone. So there's a wide variety of applications. It can be used as biometric sensors. Uh, Nike and Adidas were developing some such to, for football players, for example back in the 2010 time frame. We want to track the biometrics of athletes so that we can see how to improve their performance, for example, because athletes, athletes want to improve their performance so that they can win the games or perform better if they're track stars, runners, for example, and uh, that's a big thing. As you can see, e-textiles can come in different fabrics, different substrates, substrates being the, the underlying material that the conductors are sewed or woven into. And there's also different amount of flexibility. This, for example, is nice and thick and has many conductors in there. It's not as flexible as this very thin piece of material that feels more like wire mesh. And then there's this one that is definitely more flexible than the wire mesh, but not as flexible as this nice soft fabric that feels more like satin. This one is also much stretchier than the prior samples. And these are not stretchy at all. These are very stiff fabrics. And they're all different uses that you'd want to use these for. Now if you have silver, pure silver conductors, that's going to be lower resistance and give you better electrical properties than if you use silver impregnated wire. However, silver is rather expensive, so you have that cost. Keep that cost in mind. So there are some of your options. Remember that even if you have a very flexible conductor, you may want to have something over it to protect the person from getting shocked or from conducting power. I appreciate you tuning in. You can get crafts from SparkFun, Adafruit, and others like them if you'd like to experiment with some e-textiles. I would like to point out something a little bit funny whenever I was working on this art project. Now this is just a bag that I bought at the craft store and I colored it myself with some markers and then I added some LEDs and used the, the lily pad circuit card. Well, I stitched resistors on there. I used a thousand ohm resistors when I should have used 100 ohm resistors. Well, the higher the resistance, uh, the less power you're gonna get across it. So it wasn't enough to actually power these LEDs. Otherwise, I could turn it on and show you. So do pay attention to little details like that. I also have a list of do's and don'ts when using e-textiles. Um, do stitch, stitch in straight lines. Stitch, don't <laughs> stitch around a resistor. You want to actually stop at the resistor or component tie off the thread and then start again on the other side. Otherwise, if you just continue with that thread, it'll be the path of least resistance, which is what 
the electricity will take. It won't go through the resistor, for example. You don't want to make loops with the, with the thread and make it loose because if you make a loop next to a straight line, you can actually cause a short. That thread will touch another trace and then the electricity is going to go where you don't want it. All right. There's little things like that. I, again, if you wanted to make some thread that actually optionally touched each other, you could use that as a button. Um, that's all I had for today. I hope that you all learned something and were a little bit entertained and happy trails, partner. <laughs> uh, I hope you have a great day, happy innovating, and have a productive day. Thank you for tuning in.